Catherine here, the last few months have been full of news from the world of kidney disease. Two new, incredibly effective treatments are here. A new medication in particular can really help with proteinuria. Proteinuria is an extremely important predictor of kidney function decline. When there is too much protein in the urine compared to what's normal in the stage of kidney disease you're in, it means your kidney function is going to decline fast. So this treatment will really be able to help so many people. And there is more, because it's also recent news that a medication that everyone is taking is now considered dangerous. We have also seen recently that many foods that were banned are now healthy for you. Wow! And it is key, in my opinion, that you guys are knowledgeable about what's new so you can make informed decisions at the next doctor appointment. My goal today is to give you all the info you need to help you slow the decline of your kidney function and help extend your life expectancy and give you a much better quality of life as well. So let's start with the news about the medications that cut proteinuria in half. Now we need to understand why I believe this is huge news. Why is proteinuria so important for those with kidney problems? Proteinuria can make all the difference between ending up in diasis and reversing kidney disease. Proteinuria levels, also known as albuminuria or protein in the urine, can actually tell you your future. Keeping this level in the right range means that kidney disease is under control, but if proteinuria is too high, a fast decline in kidney function is almost always a consequence. So the question is, is your mean albumin excretion rate below 30 mg a day already? If not, this new medication may really help you. This is a prescription called finarenone. Finarenone is in a class of medications called non-steroidal mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists. This medication is sold under the name Crandia. Today, it is used to reduce the risk of kidney function decline, kidney failure, cardiovascular problems in people with chronic kidney disease associated with type 2 diabetes. So, if you have diabetes and your proteinuria is high, you should really consider this new medication because it can really help. In a study conducted before its approval, it was able to lower proteinuria levels by more than 40%. Now, this study was done on rats, but these rats have kidneys that are extremely similar to ours. In fact, a more targeted study was immediately granted to finarenone, which eventually led to its FDA approval as a treatment for diabetic kidney disease. Today, patients can benefit from the powerful kidney protecting effect this medicine has to offer. And finarenone is not really news, by the way, because it was approved already in 2021 by the FDA. And starting from 2022, the European Union also approved it. But we all know how the medical world goes, am I right? I mean, if I don't talk about it here, it may take decades before your doctors mention it to you. Now, it's also worth noticing that this medication also comes with its own side effects. Most common is high potassium levels in blood. If this happens, avoiding eating bananas won't help you. Instead, you should consult your doctor about the medications you are taking. But given the huge benefits this new treatment has, the side effects may be considered acceptable. But there is actual news I want to talk about. A new study published in the December 2022 issue of Diabetes Care, in which finarenone was used in combination with another new medication, Forexiga. What they found out in this study is that the kidney and cardioprotective effect of these two medications are cumulative. Since these medications 
work in two different ways. Patients who take both may have greater therapeutic benefit and fewer adverse events than when taking just one of them. This is especially important because both these medications have kidney and heart protecting benefits and we all know how crucial is protecting the heart in people with CKD. So in the near future, a patient with diabetes and high proteinuria may be recommended to take both an MRA such as finaranone and a SGLT2 inhibitor such as Forexiga. That will be awesome because it will mean that certain patients will be able to delay dialysis by a decade or more just by taking two tablets per day. Forexiga alone can be a huge step forward in that direction, by the way. So this is the other innovative treatment I wanted to talk about. What is Forexiga and why you should consider it? Forexiga is the commercial name of dapagliflozin, a very innovative medicine that works for most kidney patients, including those without diabetes. This medicine recently received a very fast FDA approval to treat chronic kidney disease because it can significantly slow down the progression of CKD. This FDA approval can be considered one of the most significant advancements in the treatment of chronic kidney disease in the last 20 years. This is because Forexiga was tested on people with kidney disease with a huge impressive success. In the phase 3 clinical trial called DAPA CKD Forexiga was tested on 4,304 participants with CKD, GFR from 25 to 75 or stage 2 to 4. The trial lasted 36 months and well, the result of the clinical trial was so about the expectations. The Independent Data Monitoring Committee recommended stopping all the trial because of the incredible efficacy of this medicine. Yes, this is why this medicine is already being prescribed to treat kidney disease all around the world. What you can expect if you get prescribed this one is basically to halve your risk for the worst outcomes of kidney disease that are dialysis and death. So you can imagine how much better the outcomes may be when also taking phenarenone. Now, Forexiga is not approved for people with GFR lower than 25 and also it's not cheap. Phenarenone, which is also not cheap, doesn't really help people without diabetes and high proteinuria levels. Still, having new treatments for people with kidney problems is a hugely positive news because, well, the treatments available today are not always safe for people with CKD. Yes, one of the reasons why this combination of medications is extremely interesting for us is because it will decrease the need for ACE inhibitors and ARBs. So what's the problem with ACE inhibitors and ARBs? Well, today the medical field is starting to lose its faith in the two medications that were once considered the cornerstones of the treatment for CKD. You see, the issue with these medications that basically 8 out of 10 kidney disease patients are taking is that they are very hard on the kidneys. Now, you are probably taking one of these if you have kidney disease. ACE inhibitors or ACI are those medications ending in pril, such as enalapril and lisinopril and more. ARBs are medications ending in sardan, such as lusardan, volsardan and many more. But they also come in brand names. I have a list now on screen, you can see. These are the most commonly prescribed medications to treat high blood pressure in those with kidney disease. Because they do not only lower your blood pressure, these medications also protect the kidneys from proteinuria, the most important marker of kidney damage. The reason why most kidney disease patients are almost always prescribed one of these is proteinuria, not just high blood pressure. So you may understand why having new medications that are not as hard on the kidneys to protect from proteinuria is extremely important. And you see, the problem with ACE, I and ARBs is that they are now linked to severe structural damage of the intrarenal arteries and arterioles. I mean, that's bad. Which is frankly scary. The medications that are supposed to protect the kidneys are now seen causing the damage. Today, some doctors are even telling their patients to stop these medications, especially patients without high proteinuria levels. You see, the STOP ACE inhibitors trial, which was published in November of 2022, proved that in people with advanced kidney disease, there is not a significant difference in terms of kidney function when discontinuing these blood pressure medications. 
Let me repeat this. Patients in stage 4 and 5 of kidney disease didn't lose their kidney function at a very different rate when stopping ACE I or ARBs. So yeah, you may want to ponder that a little bit and probably talk about it with your doctor. But always consider your proteinuria levels. Patients without high proteinuria have the smallest benefit from taking these medications. The last reason why someone may want to limit their dependency on ACE inhibitors and ARBs is because they are one of the most common causes of hyperkalemia or high potassium in blood. Yep, potassium is the biggest thing that's going to change in 2023. You see, the old belief that potassium-rich foods are the cause of high potassium in blood is finally going to disappear once and for all. As I was saying, certain very common medications can cause your potassium levels to raise, but there is more. New guideline for CKD is now telling doctors to stop forbidding patients from eating potassium-rich foods and, well, that's huge news because you know changes this big in the clinical guideline don't happen very often don't underestimate this everything a doctor does any medication they prescribe any dose any therapy they do it because there are guidelines telling them to do that and now the guideline for nutrition in kidney disease changed but it's still true that one out of five CKD patients have high potassium levels and that needs to be addressed and avoiding bananas and potatoes won't help at all. There is a list of reasons why your potassium levels may be high and if your doctor doesn't know about that, you should better get informed. You will be able to lower your potassium levels and to eat tomatoes and avocados again. How? Watch my video up here, I'll explain all. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.